Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's that time of the week. And for some time, we've left time with Eric and Marie uh, for some time. We've left it uh, just being on its own for some time. But we're glad to be back once again, where we bring you uh, talks about marriage and personal development. So my name is Eric Amwaka Buedu, as you all know. And that's my lovely wife. Marie Amwaka Buedu. <laughs> I hope everybody's well. Good evening to it's all. It's been a while. You. It's been a while. Do you want to come on in a bit? Oh. Yeah, it's been a long while. It's been yeah. a long while. We took some sabbatical leave, I should say. Uh, it's been more than, I think, a year since we did this joint program together. But we're so happy to bring it back your way because um, a lot of people were saying, oh, what's happening? Where's Eric? Where's Marie? And um, we decided, you know what? Let, let's do it. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So we've been on Facebook Live for the past five years or so. I think we're doing live since 2016, 2015, 2016. And um, we left it for a whole year. So we're back again today. And today's topic is gonna be great. Right, yeah. So just as Eric has said, good evening to everybody. Um, some of you know us separately on, on, on social media or on Facebook. Um, some of you follow me on my page, on my timeline. Uh, others also follow Eric separately. And then also some know us to be a duo where um, on this particular page, Time with Eric and Marie, we talk about marriage, we talk about personal development or self-development, how you can improve yourself, improve your life from whatever stage you're at to the next level. Um, initially, when we first started this program a couple of years ago, uh, it used to be marriage separately, personal development separately. So we used to do it over two days. Um, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, we also took it on radio here in the United Kingdom. So we used to be on GN radio um, in the UK presenting the same program. But then um, life takes over. Life <laughs> takes over. And this year in particular, COVID-19 took over. Tell me about um, it. You know, coronavirus came about, run about January time, beginning of the year. Um, just about February, by the end of February, we were all on lockdown. And everybody was trying to figure out what this year was going to, you know, how this year was going to turn out to be. Um, being hit with a pandemic, none of us had experienced it before. Uh, trying to figure out our lives, you know, the children, etc. We decided just to come off this particular program. Um, in the midst of that, we developed new interests. Um, Eric started his own program towards the end of summer. He started his... Uh, My art show is called African uh, Art Talks with Eric, and he's doing really well. I've done, I think I'm on my 14th episode now. Um, it's a program where I bring in artists from Africa, uh, to be precise, whether you're in the diaspora, but you're still African, or you're in African, Africa itself. I bring all of you to that art program. So that, that's what I ventured into, and I'm still venturing into. Yeah. So, yeah, he started his art program... Uh, just as he's explained, I also took on a, a completely new interest. Um, I stepped into my father's shoes, politics, um, which has been very, very interesting for me, um, trying to analyze, you know, um, and be as objective as possible as I can be with our whole political landscape in Ghana. It's been a learning curve, a learning experience because it's election year. So I have a separate interest in that at the moment, um, which I just absolutely love been at home for close to what 10 months now i believe um i just decided to take the rest of the year off just take the year out so even though school is back in session i'm still at home and um yeah whilst at home last couple of weeks i would say close to about two months now um i was asking the lord what else i could do and uh, god dropped in my spirit something that we could come up with a product line which we will be sharing with you guys tonight so, can't wait can't wait so tonight is a <laughs> comeback of time with eric and marie as well as our product launch that's right and we hope that you guys will patronize the product um well we love it i love it i absolutely love it eric loves it we both our kids love it um we've shown it to a few friends they also they love it they, they approve love it. of it's it it's a great program yeah it's, it's a, something it's a that can help product. couples spice up your marriage life spice up your sex life as well um, so yeah, we'll be sharing that with you guys and we hope that you will patronize it and actually start buying. It's all about selling. So we're going to be selling tonight. Why not? And Why then, not? 
I have my brother here who says he wants to learn how to make shit. So somebody, somebody please help this gentleman out. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you who've joined us tonight, we're so glad that you've actually joined this evening. Let's go through and say a quick hello to um, those who joined us this evening. And I'm going to say hello to my brother-in-law, Joseph Dapomensa, who's joined in. Uh, I think he's the one asking for the shit, I think. <laughs> and we've also got, uh, right, okay. So St. Paul Kwesi says, I need help with preparing my fufu. Any help? Wow. Okay. All right. St. Paul, you want to learn how to prepare fufu? <laughs> okay. No problem. We'll be talking some um, tips. So, yes, it's a marriage program. So if you wanted to learn how to cook as well, I, yeah, we'll try our best to teach. Uh, we normally talk about things within marriage, so things that will make your marriage uh, blissful. And that's tonight's topic. So how to enjoy a blissful marriage. So, um <laughs> Kobe, Kobe says, I want to laugh. I'm holding it. No, 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 no. I really, <laughs> I didn't see your notes. I, I would have laughed. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a funny one anyway. Right. So, I uh, wish to talk to you one on one, says INSL. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see who else has joined in. So, we've got Albert Yawo, who's joined in. Uh, it's Naida Taylor Adi, who's also joined in. So, thank you all for joining in. And that's from my end here. Yes, um, so I'm also hosting a watch party. Guys, please share the video, host a watch party. If this was politics, you guys will be here in your numbers. You'll be sharing in your numbers. So go ahead and share the video. I have a beautiful sister here on the watch party, Ekwia Akosomonyante Chua. She's watching. She's just sent a wave. So hello to you, Ekwia. Hi, Ekwia. How are you doing? She says, Marie, you look so... Oh, oh, Focus Man. So Focus Man is here as well. Focus Man says, Marie, you look so cute. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hi, you're right. Thank you. And then we also have Colin Sapon. Colin, he like anytime I turn on the camera, Collins is here. I believe he's from Ger he's watching from Germany. Hello, Collins. So thanks for joining again. I don't think you've seen me in this life before, or you've seen us together with Habi. So um uh yeah. we've also got Samba. Samba Adamu says good San evening, Sister Marie yes. and um Akonta, Mr. Eric. Oh, hi Samba, <laughs> how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Yes, Samba. Great, great, Hello, great, great. Samba. So Samba is in Bordeaux, France. Right, okay. Samba is also another, um, yeah, he always comes to show support. Thank and then you, let's Samba. mention Weiss Dutor, who's also joined in, and Alethea Dolly, who's also joined in. Akusia yes. Dapa, hi, says good evening. Um, yes, so those commenting on StreamYard, I've mentioned so your thank name. thank you all. And then St. Paul, Chrissy, looking great. God bless you, Mr. and Mrs. God bless you too. God bless you too. Um, I need your help in preparing my fufu. Any help? It depends. What type of fufu are you preparing? Let us know in the comment section. It will help you out. I will help you out. <laughs> and, We've also um, got Owen yeah, Gift. Owen Gift says hello. Hi, Owen. How are you doing? And then Marjorie Ewukusowa. Hello, Marjorie. Uh, Mahoney P. Hi, Mahoney. I am Nes Nestle. Wow, wish to talk to you one on one. Okay, I think you've read that. And then we have Yetunde at Yetunde Adishina. Hello, Yetunde. Hi, Yetunde. Nana Joa is also here. James Solomon is here. Snyder, Snyder Taylor Adi. Hello to you, Gifty Mensa. Deborah Owusu Ajo. Um, Charles Thompson, my uncle Charles is here. Hi, Uncle Charles. Uh, Nana Machumesi and Ellen Yeboa. We've also got Gifty Vicky Aqua who says, Evening to both of you. Hi, Vicky. How are you doing? Good evening, Vicky. Great. So today we're going to spend about 45 minutes at most to, to do this program because it's an introductory one. We normally go beyond the hour, but um, being today, today being the first, since we have, you know, started this again, we're not going to extend it too much. But we're going to talk about marriage today. And I'm going to put the topic up because today's, let's introduce ourselves. We've been married for 23 years. And we are marriage coaches as well as personal development coaches. So we've been doing this for the past six years, I should say. And we, as Marie introduced earlier on, used to do this show. And we put it on hold to pursue personal interests. So we've come back, but we've not let go of our personal interest. We're still doing our personal interest, but we will still be talking about marriage as well as personal development. We'll be coming bi-weekly for a start. And if the interest grows, we'll do it on a weekly basis. We'll see how it goes. But it's a very, we're not here to prescribe, but we are here to share our story with yourself. And at some point, we'll be inviting some of you to come online to also share your story because that's what it's about. Sometimes we'll be speaking in three because most of our, of our audience are Ghanaians and most of the times we'll be speaking in English as well. Uh, we would like to just spread the message afar. So that's what we'll be doing. 
let's put today's topic there let's find it so today's topic is how to enjoy a blissful marriage how to enjoy a blissful marriage right let's introduce it many a times you know we go into marriage with high hopes and we're all happy we're all blissful um, but after some time this joy this blissfulness starts dwindling and a lot of marriages end in divorce we've heard it so many times we see it all around us but today we'd like to delve into it a bit more uh, as to how we can actually let's first of all look at what the flags are what causes people to lose interest in marriage what causes people to just fall by the wayside of this thing called marriage it's a journey and then also look at how you can improve upon yours to have a much joyous blissful marriage because that's what we're here for uh, so let's look at some of the red flags we all know marriage is a good thing uh, it's an agreement between two people but many a times after a few years that's it people start losing interest so what what, what do we think some of the factors are if you have a comment comment in there we'll read your comment with regards to it as we said we're all sharing our knowledge on this subject area no two marriages are the same anyway yeah um i think for me just to give a bit of a background as to why i was particularly interested in us restarting this program is uh, a video that um surfaced on social media a few weeks ago where a gentleman had um he had gotten into a fight with his brother-in-law. We all saw the video on social media where at the end of the video, he said to his brother-in-law, I was going to kill your sister. It involved a pastor in the United States of America, Ghanaians for that matter. Um, less than 24 hours later, um, he killed his wife. So as we were all watching the video, um, just deliberating on it, confused, wondering why this had happened, how things had escalated to that level, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I said to Eric, no, there is, there is a need in this particular area. And um, as with anything, the more you teach on it, the more you grow yourself. Um, not also being oblivious to the fact that the more attacks you get yourself. So we are not oblivious to the fact that as we're teaching on marriage, our marriage would be attacked. So we are very much aware of that. We are very conscious. We try to um, safeguard ourselves, safeguard our marriage, pray, um, do everything possible to make sure that we are fit enough as a couple to be able to speak on these matters. And um, as Eric said, not use, not, not prescribe, but use our, our own personal journey, our own personal experience 23 years later um, as a yardstick. Uh, especially for marriages that are on the rocks, um, marriages where the couples are confused, they don't know how they, you know, moving forward. And particularly for those who are just about beginning the journey or aspiring to get into marriage. I mean, just this evening, um, the whole of this afternoon, I've been watching a video of one of my mentees um, getting married. She got married this afternoon. And she's a lady who's been following time with Eric and Marie right from the start. And to see her getting married this afternoon, um, you know, it brought joy to my heart because we have been a part of her journey. So um, marriage, why do marriages get sour? Why do marriages fall apart? Um, what are the red flags? I would say we evolve. We, we constantly are evolving as human beings. Um, we are constantly developing ourselves as human beings. I always say we can start from a perspective of, you see, everything is about perception. So we can start from a perspective of the fact that the, the man I met 23 years ago in 1997 here in London is not the same person sitting here today. Even in terms of his, his, you know, his physique, his physical state, he's not the same person sitting here today. Likewise, myself, the woman he met in 1997 is not the same person sitting here today. We, ha we have changed physically, spiritually, emotionally, um, you know, everything that has L-Y on the end of it. We have changed in that sense. Likewise, our interests. So, for example, when we first met, um, I might have had certain interests. He might have had certain interests. Um, his vision 
would have been different from my vision. Of course, at the time, we managed somehow to merge our visions together. Did we even know that they were called visions at the time? I don't think so. We found out later. But some way, somehow, our visions were in sync, which is why we agreed to get married. Then children came along. Then life came along, you know, figuring this thing called marriage, trying to figure it out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are, you know, we often hear that the, if you're able to cross the first five years of marriage, then you're likely to get married for a very long time. Some also stretch it to 10. If you're able to cross the first 10 years of marriage, then you can get married. You're pot you potentially could get married for a very long time. Um, do I agree with that theory today? I would say not entirely, not entirely, because we've seen people who've been married for 20 odd years still get divorced, um, 30 odd years they still get divorced, some even 40 years, and you wonder, ah, but they've been married for all these many years, so what at all could have separated them, what at all could have made them divorce? Um, beloved, I conclude that, you know, we are human beings, we're human beings, we're constantly evolving, so it's important that we learn to regularly check in on each other and find out whether we are still aligned to each other as a couple. Because if we are not careful, um, life could cause us to be drifting apart. We could be, uh, you know, we could be disaligning, if that's the word, or misaligning, if, you know, whichever one is the correct one, without realizing that something is happening. So we ought to be careful. We ought to check in, in with each other. And at all times, if we realize that something is falling, you know, if something is derailing, uh, find a way of bringing it back on track so that we are constantly aligned. Once we are aligned, then we are guaranteed that we are moving forward together. But if we are not aligned, it's just a matter of time before the gap gets wider and wider and wider. And by the time you realize we've fallen apart. And one, one of the major um, effects of not aligning with each other is ultimately divorce. Yeah. But it creeps in in such a very minor way that you don't even notice it. Nowadays, where social media has taken over all our lives, I mean, <laughs> nobody is exempted from it. Yeah. Social media has taken over our lives so much so that you can dedicate your life to your phone without realizing it. Mm -hmm. You can spend so much time interacting with other people that you might lose interest in what you've got. That is your marriage. Yeah. So as Marie said, most at times it is very wise to just check in on each other. We've got 24 hours within the day. Let's say if you are away from each other for eight hours minimum because of work, for instance, checking on each other for the remaining 16 hours, make sure that you know what your partner is actually going through yeah. or how they are faring or just ask them, not on a daily basis, obviously, but ask them where their state of mind is in a very nice way. Don't be so direct, but try and align with them mentally. It can come from Marie or it can come from myself. And no one should take offense to that. It's just a matter of making sure that we're still on this journey together and whether our visions have changed. And as Marie said, our visions do change. Look at our skin. Our skin changes on a daily basis. So are our thoughts. We have about... 8,000 plus thoughts yeah, every every hour. So with these thoughts comes, you know, decisions. So if these decisions are taken without you communicating it to your partner or your spouse, you might be going on a journey and your husband or your wife might not be aware of it. So it's really important that at all times we form the habit of just finding out from each other how you're doing, uh, how your work is going, for instance, or how your project is going. In that way, you are always in sync with each other. I remember when we first got married, we used to, we had mobile phones in those days. We used to text each other. You know, we used to just text, I love you. Very quick text messages on a regular basis. I think these days it's calmed down a bit. We need to pick it up. But <laughs> those are the areas that kept us going the, uh, in, our, in our marriage. The reassurance of love, you know where you let the person know that, yes, I'm thinking of you, I'm still there for you. But I suppose the reason it's gone down is because we're here. We're, we're here. We're here working from we're home. Here. If we are working from home, you, I can't be texting, yeah. I love you whilst you're writing you know, in front of me. You know, but so I, I, situations have changed. But yeah. the example I'm giving is to do with the fact that couples should form the habit of communicating with each other. Uh, I think saying I love just, you. Just 
saying that word on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. Even if we are at home, the word I love you should come. So it's not only text. There are so many ways of communicating the word I love you. But that's something that is audible and it goes to the back of the subconscious mind for the person to register that, yes, I'm still there for you. Yeah, I think we I think when it comes to the words I love you, we have done it so much so that it has become it's almost like we are on autopilot. It's almost like we are on autopilot where I love you is just constant, you know, not just with the two of us, even with our girls, but it has to be meaningful as well. It has to be meaningful, it has to be intentional. So I think it's important that we put that out. That very, way very, well. very yeah. true. Don't just say because Eric and Marie say so. But mean it. Because if you love someone, you'll communicate that love. You know, we're not going to go back to the days where we say, oh, but but she knows I love her anyway, so I'm not going to say it. Or, but he knows I love him, so I'm not going to say it. The actual words mean a lot. Love is a spirit. Yeah. When you say it, it starts going into action. So that is something that we shouldn't forget to communicate. Now, the second point I wanted to raise with regards to why marriages are failing uh, so rapidly these days is the fact that people get fed up so easily. We want things so quickly in life that, you know, if something is not working out, we don't have the time to even work it out or work it through. We don't find the time to sit down and communicate because communication is one major area that marriages, you know, fail uh, because we don't actually spend time, let's say, resolving conflicts, communicating our, our feelings to each other. Let's say, for example, I'm not saying that's what normally happens. For example, if there's a disagreement between Marie and I, and we don't really sit down to talk through what we've been thinking about, what has been going through our minds, and we let it pass, we let it slide, you'd realize that very soon, I'll be in my corner doing my own thing. She'll be in her corner doing one thing. A day or two passes, and then the gap is widening. Mm -hmm. So that area is really important. Whereby if you have misunderstandings, if you do fall out with each other, because it's bound to happen, we are human beings, find the time to talk it through. And when you're talking it through, just go with this. This is something that I have practiced. Go with a mindset that we're not here to fight. Yeah. We're here to uh, uh, find out where we disagreed so that we can explain to each other what we were thinking. Because sometimes when you're saying something, you might not say what you meant in your heart. It might just come out the wrong way. Yeah. Or the person receiving the information you're giving might actually take it differently because we are, even though we're married, we are still different people right. with our different ways of thinking. So when you say something to your wife or you say something to your husband and he doesn't understand or she doesn't understand, it's up to you to explain what you meant. Genuinely, from your heart, this actually allows you to understand each other better and then you know get the marriage going yeah i think for me one thing you said that um i would like for all of us married couples and those who are about to get into and it, you see it doesn't even have to be married couples alone you relationship are, isn't it any relationship that's right any relationship it even, could, even friendship it could even be friendship that's exactly right. it could even be friendships um one thing you said that i think is it's important we really hammer on is um letting the other the, the other person know your feelings it's about Very the important. feelings how you feel because you see your feelings are connected to your happiness and ultimately if you are not happy in a relationship one day one day you will pack your things and you will leave in fact this afternoon we, we were watching a video <laughs> <laughs> Oh we my. were watching a video. I'm not sure whether what I'm thinking is what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait and see. Wait Let's see. see. <laughs> we were watching a video, even at work, exactly, Maxwell. We were watching a video, and I said to Eric, uh, women have to be very careful the way they exit marriages or relationships <laughs> these days. Because of what oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember that one. Because of what our brother did to his wife in the US. <laughs> if you're going to exit, <laughs> you better oh, they just keep it quiet and exit quietly. I'm don't go and make any noise. You. you don't want to lose your life, mm -hmm. you know. But um had feelings been communicated. You know, I'm not talking about this particular incident. No, no. But I, th I think you've done a video on that, isn't it? Yes, I've done a That's video. Right. Feelings really need to be communicated. You should be able to say to your partner, I am not happy. I am not happy. And if you're not happy, you're and, not happy. And, and in saying so, one area that men, you know, men, and I'm speaking to my gentlemen here, 
one area that we fall short of is when a woman is going through something, <laughs> and, I, and I'll, I'll say it from the woman's point of view first, they fail to communicate it effectively to us, audibly. And men are audible people where we'd like to, sometimes we are audible. Uh, we are mostly visual, but sometimes we are audible. When your woman doesn't tell you exactly how she's feeling, <laughs> you'll be ob oblivious to what's happening. And then you go about your normal duties thinking, oh, your woman is just being emotional. But then they're going through things. Maybe you just said one word. <laughs> a woman, whatever you give her, will multiply it a hundred times and give it back to you. So maybe it's triggered a series of thoughts and she's just adding a whole lot of things up to make her get into a state. If she doesn't communicate it to you properly or if you don't ask, you might uh, underestimate how worse the situation is. So communication in that area goes both ways. Uh, women tell us, tell us if you feel a certain way about us and men ask your women how they feel with a very helpful attitude. Don't just go in and ignore their feelings and, and walk about your, your normal duties. Yeah, I think what I will add to that is this. Um, at some point you said maybe, um, mm -hmm. you know, if a woman, like, you know, maybe she's... Um, I can't remember exactly what it was that you said, <laughs> but so supposing you 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 notice that your your partner, your mm. wife, or your girlfriend, or you know your fiance, that's right, is not happy uh, because of something you might have said. Maybe it's because of something you might have said. Yeah, she's adding. It's not maybe. It actually is. It that um, that's, that's for, for the men. We don't know. You know, for the men, we just say things and we don't take it any far than we've said. But women are deep thinkers in that area. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So exactly. So you're right. So we will we will take that one word. We will take that one phrase. We will multiply it in our heads. We will link it up to other things. That's right. And it becomes big in our heads. And then we, we react to it. And we react to it several different ways. ways yeah. I think one thing I would say to the men is that in every relationship, in as much as we say, oh, the man must have a vision and he must communicate his vision to his wife or the woman, um, you know, whatever, whatever. Women like to see progress. Mm -hmm. We like to see progress. When you we've been at a particular point for a long time, um, you feel as though nothing is happening. It becomes boring. It becomes stagnant. Um you know, and then sometimes you feel, and I'm going to be very honest here because this is time with Eric and Marie. For those of you who follow us, you know, we are real on our platform. This is real talk. Sometimes you feel like you're being boxed in because, you know, you have dreams within, you have aspirations within you. You want to unleash some of these things. You really want to go out. You want to do things, but you feel like, oh, because I'm a married woman, I have to you know, kind of step back a little bit. This is a man's job. This is a man's work duty. This is the man's role. And so sometimes women feel like they're boxed in. Um, again, what I would suggest to women is that when you reach that point, when you start having those types of feelings, <laughs> again, it's communication. You have you have to communicate it. Um, recently, I had a decision. I was, you know, in a process of making some decisions here and there. Um, I had to grab Eric's attention and say to him, look, I need you to hear me out on this one. This is what I want to do, A, B, C. This is how I want to go about it. I need you to hear me. I need you to be with me on this page, as, you know, et cetera. <laughs> and he, he, if he understood. Okay, so it's, it's the way you even communicate it. It's the way you communicate you know, he, it, yes. If you go to your partner with just forceful, uh, you must blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it won't work. So you have to communicate it in a way where both of you get to the same place of understanding. Yeah. There is a, a note from Samba which I'd like to address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, please, my question is, and let's paste it on there. Please, my question is, what if you try to correct your partner and he or she obeys, but keep on doing the same most often, what would you do? Okay. So what if you, number one, correct? Yeah. Number two, obey. Now, there are some key phrases that are coming out that will trigger rebellion. Yeah. Number one, we are not here to correct each other. In marriage, we learn from each other. 
if you observe something, you are not the one correcting, you suggest. And then, <laughs> let me say it in a local language, the person will think about it and consider. So partners who go out there to say, I'm going to correct you, you are wrong. Correction means, first of all, you've assumed the person is so wrong. That's but right. that might be your opinion. That's right. That might be your opinion. That doesn't mean the person is wrong per se. Mm -hmm. But the person might have their own reason. So ask your partner why they are behaving that way. And they will explain it to you. If it's still not something that you would like to continue, then suggest an alternative and talk it through to the point where compromise comes in. Absolutely. And both of you do understand. Yeah. Now, the other thing is that obeying. As partners, we are even, we are equal. We don't go telling you, obey my rules, obey my suggestion, obey. No, the moment that goes in, your partner will rebel. Because we are human beings, we've got our own DNA, we've got our own characteristics, we've got our own what, sense of pride, and we'd like to hold on to it. So, yes, let's, let's try and be more suggestive. Let's, if the person loves you, they'll consider what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and go ahead and change their ways or come to a compromise. I so, Samba, it's a really good question. Yeah. I think there was a video recently that we watched. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the program, but it was, it was a white lady with a Nigerian, an African gentleman, her husband. And um, in the course of them, it was their wedding day. And in the course of them saying their vows, the priest, oh, yes. the priest said um, <laughs> the woman should repeat the words, I will obey you. You know, it was part of the wedding vows. And this woman paused and she said, Obey, o -o -obey, obey who? who? And obey, obey what? what? <laughs> <laughs> that video just cried. Let, me let, out. Let's see marriage as a partnership. That's right. If we see marriage as a partnership, then you are in it together. Yeah. One is not there to obey me, correct you, all that. The more it, it, it sets. It yeah. becomes a master-slave thing. Absolutely. It's a mindset thing. So the moment the words, I am here to correct you, it means you've taken, you've assumed a certain authority over her and nobody's in charge of anybody. Or over here. him. Or over him, yes. exactly. But in, in, in most cases... Oh, it, that's out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a uh, so you know, I, I always speak for the women. I always speak... You know, I'm a, I'm a women's advocate. I'm a feminist. I okay. always speak for the women. I'll, I'll speak for the men then. So, uh -huh. so I, allow me. <laughs> Go on, dear. Allow me. So it means you've assumed authority, you've assumed lordship, you are dominating, you know, the typical men thing. And then obey. This is where, oh, you're not being submissive. Now, what's, what, what's, what's your definition of submissiveness? I think for us, our type of ethnicity, um, submi submissiveness has been misinterpreted to us. Now, many African men, for example, would look at me, Marie, my behavior, my characteristics, my demeanor, how outspoken I am, and classify me as an unsubmissive woman. But here's my husband. We've been married for 23 years. It's going strong. And so you can ask him. He's right here. Let me, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. Marriage is about respect for each other. Yeah. When the Bible talked about submission, it was about us respecting each other. If you respect someone, then you consider their views. Yeah. If you love someone and respect the person, their opinion counts. Yeah. But if you go saying, oh, do this because I'm your husband. Do that. Do this. Submit. Or the woman says, I'm your wife. Do that. I'll use you. Do that. Do that. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. Every person, as I said, has got the ability to rebel. Every single person has got the ability to decide that I want to be on my own. Yeah. So if you are going in with that domineering attitude, it won't work. That, that both ways. That mini bema, you know, that mini bema kind of. And answer many oba. I will. I was also stand uh, for the men. Or does I didn't say no. Women. I was saying <laughs> when it comes to women, women have a very sly way of using men. We should not ignore that. <laughs> and I'll stand for my brothers here that we should be able to to uh, come out with how we do things. Yeah. We should be able to communicate effectively with each other without trying to play on their intelligence. I think when I say, Odo, it was a Wijaya, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, let, let us let a man on rest for a moment because statistics across shows that when it comes to these things, it is often women who 
go through these things. The moment we try to make that point and a man comes in and always tries to say, say, oh, but men also go through, it means you're dismissing the, the, our uh, point of view not, as it's women. It's not about dismissing. I'm playing fairness here. Mm -hmm. We know that women go through that a lot. That's why we've addressed it. So I admit and I accept that men sometimes are domineering and they use the Bible verse, wife, obey your wife, uh, your husband. Your husband, yeah. Yes. All I'm also saying is that some women, because we can't take just one side and let that case be. So once we finish with the men, let's now also talk about how women also behave in that manner. But when we have so in age. that in that manner, so I'll let you finish. <laughs> but when you finish, it is important that we also talk about how women also come in here. Absolutely, that's right. So that the situation is fair and but, is considered in fairness. Yeah, but do you agree that statistically women, it is women that, who often go through that than men? But that is why I said it is important that we consider and okay. I admit and accept. Okay, good. Uh -huh. and so after that, no, we also talk about the women's side yeah. because men also have feelings. Men also uh, are able to go through these things. Yeah, but you, but, so but you we, we need to be able <laughs> to talk about both sides yeah but you ha you hardly ever hear um a man saying my wife asked me to obey her to, to you now, know it's yeah. not the it's term nothing, obey that is why i was trying to draw our attention to women have a way of doing it a woman will never come to you and say obey me but they'll find a way of using you so if we are going to talk about this aspect then we should be able to consider how it is how the men do it and how the women do it. And when you say because, using you, what what exactly do you mean? Because the women uh, will have a way of, let's say, letting you run around without you realizing it. Okay. And they use your femininity in that sense. Yeah. So we should be able to recognize both ends and deal with it. Because we are talking about marriage here. They are It's not only one person that causes divorce. It is two people that do it. Yeah. So we should be able to know how these things happen from both sexes. And then we come to an amicable conclusion how we are both going to deal with it to make sure that we don't order people about or treat one less than the other. We are all created equal in the face of God. Yeah, and I, I think a, a very good way, so let, let me pin the question again for the benefit of those who have just joined us. We are addressing this particular question where our brother Samba is asking, um, how do you try and correct your partner uh, when he or she... So please, my question is, what if you try to correct your partner and he or she obey, He or she obeys but keeps on doing the same most often? What do you do? So it means that you've been able to get them either side. You've been able to get them once to, to, to see your point of view and perhaps stop whatever it is that they're doing that you're not happy about. But then it carries on. So it, it's a character trait. You're trying to get that subaino to stop. Um, in order for you to be able to achieve that, like Eric said, uh, it, it's you have to go about it in a very respectful way, knowing that, um, first of all, you can also look at it from the flip side. How do you change yourself first to be able to accommodate what it is that they are doing so that it doesn't always cause a rift between the two of you. Um, like Eric rightfully said, if you go in with the mindset of I am going in there to correct you, well, you have to know that you also have certain things about you that they also might want to correct. Let me and size, that's where yeah. the, the banter might keep Let me happening. cite this example. As you're pointing your finger at someone, four of them are pointing back at you. And Jesus said, remove the log in your eye before you go and remove the dog in someone's eye. Yeah. So before you go correcting and expecting someone to obey, check yours first. Yeah. But most of the times, if we change our lives, the other person changes, especially in marriage. It happens a lot. When there's an area that you want to develop, start developing yourself first. You realize that your partner will pick up and, yeah. and you'll, be, you'll be in sync. Because there are so many spiritual things that are happening in marriage that we are not even aware of, whereby we are getting together. The Bible says the two shall be one. So we are always becoming one in spirit and in body. How we think, we are becoming one in that manner. Yeah. So if you want to change in your partner, start changing in that area. Yeah. And I think also once we understand that 
the only person any human being is subject to in terms of obedience is themselves, is their own self. So I am obedient to myself and nobody else. Yes, I can, you know, agree with my husband on certain things. We can disagree on certain things. We can compromise on certain things. We, 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 you know, we sit down, we deliberate, you fire Juni boom and everything. But when it comes to obedience, I, I only obey myself. And by me saying I only obey myself, I make an ultimate decision. Likewise, him, he makes an ultimate decision that whatever it is that my wife has put before me, this is how I am going to approach it, agree with her on, disagree with her on. And if I'm disagreeing with her, here are my reasons. It's so it, it all boils that back down to effective communication, how we are able to communicate effectively so that at the end of the communication, we are moving better. We are moving away as, as, as a stronger couple. We are moving away as, as better people, you know, not having uh, left behind any anything that, you know, would in future cause any further arguments or anything between us. So we make sure yeah. that we resolve at the end of every conflict, disagreement, whatever it is, you know, the so-called something that you've done that he or she wants to correct, we make sure we leave the discussion with an understanding that we are moving away as, as a better couple. We are moving away stronger. And I'll use one, one key yeah. word here, respect. That's right, respect. Respect. When you have respect for each other, it's much more easier to consider their point of view. When Marie says she doesn't obey anyone apart from herself, when it comes in the context of marriage, it is considering the other person's opinion if you respect the person. If you love and respect the person, you are more likely to consider their opinion. And I think I said it earlier on. So in marriage, it's about love and respect, yeah. whereby your viewpoints would be considered by each other. And the obedience is where I have made a decision. I've made a decision to myself that yes, I am ready to sit down and talk through this matter with you. The same way I can also make a decision in obedience to myself and say, no, I am not ready to sit down and talk through this matter with you, or I don't even want to talk about it at all. Let's just let it be. I ultimately make that decision. And that's what I mean by being obedient to myself. And I think, yeah, two things to answer that question, and you were right on that. Let's remove the word correct, correct out or correction and obedience. These are two ways that if you bring into a marriage or into any relationship, you might cause a lot of problems for yourself Definitely. because nobody Definitely. is Lord over another human being. Let love and respect be your key words yeah. and you'd find it easier to, to accommodate each one's view. Yeah. Um, right. So I made a few notes here and I'm going to go through it. One of the areas that we don't develop that affects us a lot is that we don't learn to pursue our individual ventures yeah. marriage is not something that's like a prison and a lot of people have this mindset that once they get married they can't do what they used to do anymore yes you might consider the other person's opinion in what you're doing because now you are married i am married to marie she's married to me and therefore i would consider her in what i'm going to do so in time past if i wanted to let's say go out with the boys boys now i'll think about her when i want to go out with the boys boys and factor her into what's happening. Yeah. That is respect. So, in terms of pursuing your personal agendas, yes, it boils down to communicating with each other. Say, okay, although I have now found a new... There we go, yeah. So... As I was saying, um, different agendas might come in, different interests might come in. And let's say if you want to now start watching football, you will talk to your partner. Although these days have developed a keen interest in watching football. So let's say on Saturdays or every Saturday in one month, I'll go out and watch, let's say, Chelsea, or I'll go and watch Man U. Yeah. Now, if you communicate that effectively to your wife, I don't think your wife will be selfish enough to say, don't go. Or your husband will be selfish enough when your, your wife is going out with her fellow girls to go and chill, ladies' night, and all that. It's about communicating it. But most of the times, we hold people bound. 
know that she's still an individual person. The marriage, yes, brings her interest into the marriage, but she's got other interests outside of the marriage, which she can pursue, which he can pursue. So get to that stage where you allow your partners to pursue their personal interest as well. And then you have common interest amongst you, whereby, let's say, if you like watching the movie together, you can get a movie and watch it together. If you love traveling together, you can do that together as well. So have things that both of you share in common and things that allow individually uh, yourselves to go out and do whatever you like. And as Marie said at the beginning of the program, we put away or we put down time with Eric and Marie for a whole year whilst we're discovering personal interests. I went into art. She went into politics. And there we go. These are our personal interests that we actually pursue. So that helps a lot. Yes. And as you were talking, something just dropped in my spirit. I think another thing we ought to understand as human beings is that nobody, by virtue of the fact that we are married, um, must stay 100%, you know, forever and ever. We must understand. I think life has taught us enough. What what do you mean by must stay one hundred percent? No, because Can you explain yes, that's that's what I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. Life has taught us enough that um, people do split. It is something we must understand. Oftentimes, we are told when we are going into marriage, you know, when they say the marriage vows till death do us part, and all of these things. It, it sometimes it holds people bound. We need to understand, and, and this time we, we are going to be very honest and very blunt about some of these things, or oh, well, I will. We need to understand as human beings that we have made a commitment to stick with each other till death do us part. But we must understand that if we are not careful, if we don't put proper structures in place time and time and time again, things can fall apart. If the center is not holding well, things can fall apart. If you have this type of mindset, says a man to two normal year while we're man, she shen normal year while we're If I don't stop taking my partner for granted and think, oh, just because I've been married for 10 years, oh, we've been married for 15 years, we've been married 20 years, 23 years, so we are okay. No, we are not okay. Oh, you have to continue to put the proper structures in place like you did from day one. And in fact, even make them better. Because if you don't, you have to understand that that is why people can go 30 years and sometimes you hear they've fallen apart and you're like, ah, after 35 years of marriage, why are they now divorced? Oh my goodness. After 40 years of marriage and they are divorced? Well, yes, it happens. So if it has happened to other people, then that should be a clue to you that you need to do something right. You need to put some proper structures in place as you go along and don't take anything for granted. I, I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree with Marie here. And this is a joint effort. When yeah. she says you, it's not just one person doing all the hard work. That's right. It's up to both of you to commit. The word here is commitment. Committing to see it through and making sure that you put structures in place, as she said. What are some of the structures? Structures like we are always going to communicate every day. Mm -hmm. Structures like I'll hear you out when you don't understand me. Structures like what? I'll make sure there is financial provision in this marriage. Yeah. Structures like I will love you at all times and I'll declare it to you. Structures like um, I, will, I will also empower you to bring out your best. All these things are structures that empower each other and mix the marriage suite. But if it's still and everyone is just doing their own bit and we're just whiling away time, then <laughs> you are guaranteed that that wouldn't work because human as human beings, we develop new interest. We change. We go out there, see other people, and it triggers something here. It does, yeah. So if both of you do not sit down together to say this is where we want to take our marriage, we fall short in this area. Let's consider that area and work on it. I was just about to say yeah. that. Yeah. It, 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 things will not work out. I was just we about need to say to do that. that. Yeah, that at all times, couples must draw the wheel, the wheel of life. Draw yes. the wheel you know, section the wheel into the seven fundamental areas That's of right. life. So, you know, this is where the personal development comes in. You know, your, your, you know, the family life, the spiritual life, the financial, the career or your business, uh, your personal interests, all of these things and see which side is falling short. Because if you're not careful, a time might come where all the love is there, 
Yes, you know your partner loves you, but that love alone is not enough because you know you've, you've developed new interests, you're growing. Um, and for all of us, it, it gets to a certain point in time where uh, we measure success by material things. That's that's basic. We all know that. So you're beginning to think, okay, I'm approaching 50 years. What have I achieved in life? What do I have? Have I been able to, you know, have I checked certain boxes? At that point in time, when somebody's going through that type of um, emotional, whatever it is, um, love alone might not sustain them. Love alone, because now they are entering into that phase of life where they're thinking into the future, you know, pension stage and all of these things. These are real life conversations couples need to have. If you don't have these um, conversations and you leave things to chance, chance might happen to you. Chance might happen to you. So draw the wheel of life sit down as a couple assess where are we falling short okay we have the love we know we have the love the love is 10 out of 10 fantastic but maybe we are falling short in this area how do we you know boost this side up a bit maybe to eight or nine so that we know okay we've got that balance as well okay this side is maybe seven okay we can, we can leave it for a little while but we need to keep a close eye on that as well etc yeah. etc et let, let, let me cite this analogy assuming you have a car the law requires you to go for an MOT. Those of us in the UK will call something MOT. What was it last time you find out? Moto, it's a test. Moto, Moto something. Yeah. yeah. Now, you need to take it out for it to be checked to make sure that every part is working as it should, as the manufacturer wanted it to be. And you do that on a yearly basis. If you don't do it, the car is written off or you are not allowed to drive on the road. It's similar to marriage. If you don't constantly check areas in your life, your marriage life, your individual life, your personal lives, and you allow it to just pass by on a yearly basis, you'd realize that you would lose interest much quicker than you think. Odokakra, Sikakakra, Odokakra. You bring everything together. Marie mentioned there are about seven pieces. If we will teach on this during our personal development, there's seven specific areas of life that you must pay attention to. One being your spiritual life, number one. Number two, your finances. Number three, your career, your health. What else? We've got so many. There are seven of them in total. If you ignore them, you it will be unbalanced. So you need to learn to constantly balance these areas. That is why we say awari ene kwaenwa. So it's a very long journey. And nobody said it's going to be easy. But it can be done. Yeah. We are here to encourage you that it can be done. Areas that we fall short, we all fall short, us included. We need to go back, reconsider, and work on them. Yeah, I mean, this week we we were speaking to a couple, one of one one partner. We spoke to one partner. Yeah. So, guys, we're, we're going to be ending soon because we promised ourselves not to go beyond eight. So, we might just maybe another ten minutes. Let me finish this point very quickly. So this week we were speaking to a couple, something happened and um, the lady left the house with the kids. So the gentleman called and he told us that this is what had happened, etc. They had gotten into a little bit of a fight and he said to her, look, if you're not happy, you can pack your things and go, blah, blah, blah. So, well, she took his word for what it was and she packed her things and she left. So as we were talking, I, I, said, I, said, to, I said to him, look, she leaving wasn't as a result of what you said to her during the fight. It was as a result of things that have been happening for quite some time that has been brushed under the carpet that has not been spoken about, has not been dealt with. So that final fight was the final trigger for her to eventually say, you know what, enough is enough, I'm out. It goes back to the point that we, 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 we've, we've raised this evening that in order for you to enjoy a blissful marriage, a happy marriage, you see somebody in a happy marriage. <laughs> in fact, is there anything such thing as a happy marriage? We, we put the tag on it, happy marriage, but it has its own problems. It has its own challenges. But I think if you see any couple who are very much in love with each other, all over each other, etc., etc., it's because they have figured something out. And oftentimes what they have figured out is um, they've developed themselves like we have, we continue to, and they figured out how to resolve matters, how to, how to build each other up, 
first of all, by building themselves up. So once you are full, once you are, you've discovered yourself, you know your purpose, you're pursuing your purpose, you're happy within yourself, you can confidently say that you are somewhat self-actualized, that you are fulfilled in life, then you can support your partner and help them as well. If both couples are along those lines, they have figured out one of life's biggest secrets and that's what's keeping them going. That's what makes their marriage what you might call a happy marriage. And everybody can get there. Every married couple can get there. It's a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice between the two of you to develop yourselves, learn some of these things, um, it all starts with the power of the mind, being very strong in the mind and um, knowing that it's, it, it starts off with you first before your partner. If you can get yourself in control, then you can handle matters in a very good way and it will continue to support you and support the marriage. And like Eric said, making sure that you're constantly checking in on each other and checking in on the marriage in whichever side you're falling short. If you leave it to the love alone, at one point in time, it might fade away or it might still be there. But because other areas are lacking, somebody might, you know, make a decision. So make sure at all times, everything is well balanced. All you need is a very good balance. Thank you. So this evening, I'd like us to take on this assignment. Let's all go and do an MOT on our life. Let's look at the seven areas of our life. And I'm going to mention them. We have our mental mind, uh, our mindset, our physical, which is our health, mm -hmm. our spiritual life, our social life, our wealth. I'm not just going to say our finances, but our wealth. Yeah. Our legacy. All that brings us together to have a very fruitful life. Let us assess ourselves individually as well as as married couples or people in relationships. Yeah. Let us take this assignment on. And we'll meet again when we come. But before then... I've got a few comments here I'd like to read from the watch party. Let's do so, uh, Miguel is here. Snyder, Snyder is here. Snyder hey, Snyder. Miguel. Um, Hi, Snyder. Maxwell Diaba says, thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Snyder says, Bra Eric, what are some common reasons why men become spectators in their marriage? Mm. Wow. Good question. Whoa. What's her name again? Snyder. 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 Hi, Hi, Snyder. Very, very, yeah, very good Vivian question. Vivian Obro as well. So we're going to answer this question very succinctly in a few minutes. Uh, Vivian Obro, hi, Vivian. Kweku Migi, Ohima, Queen Star. And then uh, Ejayao is also here. Hi, Ejayao. Belinda, Osabute, Bertina. Thank you all. And then I think um, Margaret, Margaret Ashmead was asking, did you say you were a Man U supporter? Yes. Yeah, so she's asking <laughs> why aren't you Arsenal? All right. Okay. Well, I am Chelsea. <laughs> so I mentioned Chelsea and Man U. No, let, let's add Arsenal to it. Definitely. But who's an Arsenal supporter in this house? No, I, I mentioned <laughs> okay, a scenario Ma when, is... when men decide to go out and watch oh, football. Oh, okay, okay. So, so Margaret, yeah, let, let's say you want to go and watch Arsenal. Okay, so she's a Gunner. <laughs> so we add the Gunners to it as why well. Why not? Why not? And then Olivia says two, two clever teachers stay in one class, one be. One be some something ambo rambo Let's see. to another, then teaching can move. This is how women have to understand and respect. Okay, so so Oliver is trying to tell us how women why 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 is it that women are the only ones who have to learn to respect? So they Oliver have to, have to understand and respect. No, respect is reciprocal. Respect is reciprocal. It's both you ways. Know, you, you don't demand it. No, you live it. It, it just comes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Eben, uh, Eben, there was a question for me. Let me answer that Eben, first before we move well on. Hi, okay. Beleza. Hi. So Eben. the question was from. The question was from Snyder, who she says, "Bra Eric, is it? Well, Bra I see. I see, Eric, yeah. I see a woman's picture. So I'm assuming it's a woman. Yeah. Bra Eric, what are some common reasons why men become spectators in their marriage? Very good question. Very good question. Number one, the man might lose interest, but it's still there. Might not tell you that they don't love you anymore, but they've lost interest a long time ago, and they will just be watching you going about your normal. You know, the marriage becomes stale, and they just having got the the courage to tell you that they've checked out. So they might check out, but still be there. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. So they're physically they, present. They are physically but... present, but their mind is far away. And the second instance, or the second example, there are so many of them, but I would like to just give two of them. It might be because, let's say, your partner, your wife, is not allowing you to be the man that you are meant to be. Because men, God has created us 
to lead in so many ways. But sometimes there are some domineering wives that will not allow. Because if a man wants to be the man that he is, not to dominate, but to be who he is, sometimes the wife can shut the husband down. So the man can become a spectator in that instance and just keep quiet and let things be. So that's just the two reasons. Uh, but in that, in that case, would you be doing yourself a favor? Or oh, obviously not. You're not doing yourself obviously a favor. Not. You, you got to have courage. So it comes with courage. Yeah. But not a lot of people have that. Yeah. Now, that's why we recommend personal development. Personal development lets you know who you are as an individual. So that the interest of someone else do not, does not override your personal interest. And it's a, it's a whole teaching that we've done over the years. But we'll be going into it as yeah. well. Yeah, it might also be a case. So um, let's just answer this. So Kevin Wood says, do you frequently talk about marriage? Yes, Hi, Kevin. Do. So we talk about two things. We talk about marriage as well as personal development. So yeah. sometimes when we come on, we'll just be talking about how you can empower yourself, how you can be a better person. That's right. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for the question. Thanks, Kevin. Yes. Yeah, so um, to be a spectator in your in your marriage, I mean, what are you looking at? A lot of people do it. <laughs> <What are laughs> it's you, unfortunately, but a lot yes, of people. What are, are you looking at? So it, for me, that says that there's there's lack of communication um, in the marriage because if if things are not going according to plan, if things are not going according to your expectations then you must talk. You must talk. Eric always says this, that even countries that are at war, you know, they do meet up you and talk. talk. They talk every you, so you often. So you, you have to talk things through. You can't continue to be a spectator in your marriage. Um, at the end of the day, you won't be happy. And if you're not careful, eventually it might lead to divorce. And the one that's feeling the pain in this instance is not the woman. It's because yourself. the question is specifically to men. So I'll yeah. say it's not the woman, but it's to yourself. You do yourself a favor by talking it through and if there's a misunderstanding and you've tried all sorts to resolve it i'm telling you you only live once move on yeah and then you've got to define what is marriage marriage is not for you to be to in, be to, to be, be in a not, union where, where you're not happy yeah where you're not happy where you're just, just a spectator, spectator. No. come on that's not what marriage is about yeah there's more to marriage than that so i like what you just said if you try everything it's not working out do yourself a favor do go, yourself go a get out don't try life. everything i mean yeah. keep trying this <laughs> keep trying do your best yeah. to resolve it talk it through do everything but if that fails, for how long? For how long? Yeah. And if it's you, the woman who has also noticed that your husband has become a spectator in the marriage, you also have a call of duty. You have a responsibility Definitely. to bring it to his attention that this is what I've noticed. How do we talk and resolve whatever the issue is and see how best we can meet each other halfway? There's another thing. Let me add a third one. Sometimes men get stressed a lot and we don't actually communicate that. We internalize it. Mm -hmm. So there are times when men will go into their men cave, go into, call back into themselves because there are a lot of things on their mind, financial, work-wise, whatever. We, when we are most at times not effective communicators. So we tend to keep things to ourselves. It's up to your wife to ask, I could see, why are you doing these days? And also you seem not to care about me or what's going on in the family or even about the kids. So it's all about communication. It's all about probing a little bit further into what's happening just to find out so that you can have a good solution. But that's a really good question. I like that. Yeah. Um, Maxwell as well says something about boss women. I'm not exactly um, what it is, but I believe it's women who are, you know, within their own rights. They are bosses. They have their career. They have their money. You know, they, they feel like they are on top of the world. What I would say to su such a sister is... Um, you see, I always, Eric and I always say this. We are Christians, we are believers, so we, we always make this analogy. When you take God, the, God as the Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Spirit, there's three of them, the Trinity, but there's no power struggle. Once you understand that, look, we are two separate individuals, two very powerful forces that God has brought together. Um, if you're able to join those two forces together, the two of you become a force a much bigger for force. everybody to reckon with. Yeah, this is why one. people call Eric and I a power couple. It's because we have figured out I'm a very powerful force. He's a very powerful force in his own right. We have figured out not to uh, rub shoulders or compete with each other, but rather merge the two forces together to become one. I like Kevin's um, word. Kevin Wood says, men, let me pin that. Yeah. Men are generally not good at expressing their feelings. Their feelings. And, and that's really true because I think it's how we've been created. 
we are a bit stiff, isn't it? We need to loosen up a little bit. And I think it's <laughs> it, it, it's from tradition and culture where men have, you know, from a very young age, boys are told, you know, they're taught men don't cry, men don't cry, boys yeah, don't and all cry. That. So we, we put on that so they, facade it, yeah, and they internalize, internalize yeah. but it eats into us. So when it comes to marriage or relationship, talk, 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 let it out. Yeah. Let them know exactly how you feel. Anyway, thanks right. guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. Oliver but says, don't go yet. Yes. Don't go yet. Oliver says thank you, brother and sister. Uh, you've taught us a lot. Thanks, thank Oliver. you so much. We appreciate everybody. We appreciate that. So something to help you spice up your marriage. Um, hey. Some of you have heard Eric and I say that we have come up with a product line. Um, it's something that we love. We have it all around us in our home. And we thought we would share it with um, our beloved. And to mention, that's one of the factors how you can spice up your marriage and exactly. have a, a, a long-lasting marriage as it, well. It does help. It's a secret. <laughs> it really helps. It does help. You might it's think, oh, is this it? But yes, this it is it. It helps a lot. It really does I'm help. So we're you. going to share it with you. I'm telling you. This is our product. This is our product. And there are two types of products. Ta-da! Let's take the title out. Right, so it's it's a candle line, scented candles. It's a scented candles line. Um, obviously, I'm sure many of us love scented candles, especially us, the women, like myself. Um, for me, flavors, flavors and sweet scents, beautiful smells, always does, it does it for me, whether it's in the bedroom, whether it's in the living room, in the kitchen. I love to have... Is that know, aroma where you have it all around exactly. you? Exactly. It, it, it kind of... It creates an ambience. It creates an ambience in the bedroom. It also lifts up your spirit. You know, you just love to, you know, it, your, your home smells, your home smells nice. It smells good. Your bedroom smells nice. Um, just before any type of intimacy, sexual intimacy, <laughs> it, it's just good. So we came up with this product line for you guys. Um, we have a couple of flavors or different scents here. Let's go on. Um, we have a couple of scents or different flavors here. We will share it with you guys. And, um, it's beautiful. There we it? go. So we are burning. Right. Let me take the brand off and let's talk about. Do you want us to show the other one as well? Because yes, we've yes, got yes, two products. Go ahead there. and show the other one. Let's yeah. show the other one. Let's make sure that we've got the other one shown. I like this one. This one is Love Yourself by Marie. So the one, the other one is called Sensual, and this one is called Love Yourself by Marie. So let's show the picture, what you were going to show us now. Let's go for it. Yes, so this is one that we are burning at home. We have them in different sizes, as you saw. Um, I love pumpkin spice. Now, let's it's, go for it. it's autumn time. Let's show the whole shebang. Yes, yeah, so that's Love Yourself by okay. Marie. Okay, ooh, there you go, it's, there you go. Yes, it's autumn time. Um, we're in October. In America, they say fall. And let's show the other one. Have you got the other one as well? Uh, yes, I, I was. I was. I just wanted to finish. On yeah, this sure. One. Carry on. And um, for me, it's all about the leaves. You know, the leaves are falling. Pumpkins. Um. Yeah. Smells really nice. It's been burning. So I've been burning this. I prepared this. These are handmade or hand poured. Let me hand see. poured. We say hand poured. hand poured. These are hand poured. Specifically that, made by us. Yes. With meaning love. Meaning that we make them at home. With we love. make them ourselves at home. That's right. They're hand poured and it's soy wax. Yeah, so it's soy wax, and this particular flavor is pumpkin spice with cinnamon. It's been burning for, for weeks. So this it was has. prepared about a month ago. That's right. And you can have it burn for more than four hours, you know, at any particular time. But as they say, you shouldn't really have candles burning for over four hours. So otherwise, yeah, you can have it burning for quite a long time. And even without the lid on, once it's open, you know, your house still smells really nice. So there we have it. Um, then we also have, we have them in bigger sizes. So this is blueberry, blueberry and vanilla. Smells really good. Mm. Smells good, isn't it? Smells really yeah, good. Yeah, this is blueberry and vanilla. It has the warning sign at the bottom. So there you have it. You just have to place your order, inbox me, place your order. We'll send it out to you. For now, it's only in the UK. And now uh, we can do... We can do We can yeah, do we can the rest do of the world. We can Let's do, do the rest actually. of the world. Yeah, let's do the rest of we the world. We can do the rest of the world. So you just have to pay for the postage and we'll send it out to you. Wherever you are in the world, yeah. inbox us and we'll get it to you. So this, this size is... Let me put my glasses on. It's um 696 
grams, That's I believe right. it is. It is, yes. This is retailing for $19.99 plus postage and packaging. $19.99. Yeah, $19.99 pounds. $19.99. Now you can check out candles, luxury candles this size online. And handmade, them. you know, custom yeah. ones. Handmade, hand poured. Hand poured, as you say. You realize <laughs> that our, our price is, is competitive. So $19.99, and then you just pay a little bit for the postage, for postage as well, and we'll send it to you. And then we have um the smaller ones as well. We have we didn't bring the other scents. Where are they? Uh let me grab the other scents. I'll show you it on screen. Okay. I'll show you it on so screen. So we have we have um there we that's go. the small that's, that's the small, small blueberry one. one these are 7.99 7.99 so these are the other ones sensual and then we have um so eric will get them now we've they, we've also given them amazing names so as you can see uh the love yourself by marie is pumpkin spice but then the um and, and blueberry blueberry and vanilla but when it comes to the sensual brand, so as you can see, there are two brands here. I think we need to explain this properly. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's do it. Yeah, let's explain this properly. Let's do it. So as you can see, there are two separate brands, yeah? This brand is sensual. This Let is by that to you. Eric and Marie. So you can see the E&M so sensual by E&M. Bring it there. Yeah, okay. Sensual by E&M. And then you have the Love Yourself by Marie. Love, love yourself by my so this is my personal line brand or my line and this is us together sensual is us together now when it comes to sensual because it's for we made them for couples and we want both couples to enjoy them we've given them very interesting names so this one for example <laughs> is attraction now attraction is um the scents in there are sandalwood and black pepper that's right sandalwood and black pepper now Everybody knows that sandalwood is just amazing. I mean, if your husband or your boyfriend wears any cologne that has sandalwood in it, you know how you're always sniffing them. <laughs> so we created something like that for you in the bedroom as well. There you have it. Really nice. Amazing stuff. I'm telling you, these things are... Mwah. And it's also spice up your marriage. Yes. It's all to take you to that next level. And then we have Rescue Me. This is it. So we have sandalwood... We have um, attraction in the big size as well. And then we have um, another one by E&M. This is Rescue Me. So if you're burning this in your room, you can imagine. You'll be, you'll be <laughs> screaming for somebody to come and rescue. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, this one, Rescue Me, the spice, the scents are Belgian chocolate with orange. Belgian chocolate with orange. Now, just try and imagine the scent. Belgian chocolate with orange. Now, burning that in your bedroom you know, <laughs> ah, it's like you're in heaven. Belgian chocolate with orange. Amazing. So guys, start placing And then there's your, a third one. Start placing your order. And then there's Lover's Blend. Lover's Blend, we don't have it here. It's actually in the box. Eric didn't grab it. Sorry. Never mind. No, it's all right. Lover's, <laughs> we showed it Lover's Blend is sweet orange and vanilla. Sweet orange. So we made three different brands for couples. We've got Lover's Blend, which is sweet orange and vanilla. Then we have Rescue Me, which is Belgian chocolate and orange. And then we have Attraction, which is sandalwood and black pepper. It's just, it's just beautiful. And then Love Yourself by Marie is just two, two lines at the moment, which is the pumpkin spice and cinnamon and the blueberry and vanilla. Yes. So that's so about pla it. Place your orders. Place your orders just to take your relationship to that next level when it comes to sense and creating a new ambience, it take, it goes a very long way. Yeah. It goes a very long way. Yeah. So if you're a candle lover, now what the good thing is that we can also um, make them for you to, to resell yourself. So you can place so an a order. wholesale yeah. type. You can place an order from us. Tell us which sense you want. We will make them for you. We'll ship them to you and then you can sell them. You can have them in your shop. We actually have somebody who has requested for us to bring them some to put in their shop. That's right. So already, you know, we're, going, we're going places. Now, for those of you who are events people, we can actually make them for you for your events. Uh, we can have, we can agree on what scent you want because we have different flavors here. We can agree on what scent you want. We'll make it for you um, in the tea light, tea light holders for your event so that the whole place smells really nice. So if you're an events person, you have an event coming up, 
do let us know get in touch um that's about it for now so we'll, we are. we'll post them on our page here time with eric and marie i'll have them on my page as well that's right um as we said buying as well 19.99 for the big ones 7.99 $7 for the small plus ones. postage plus postage and you, right. you can burn them for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks great so these are our autumn scents um winter scents will be coming out soon soon for christmas and then we'll have them they, they're going to be seasonal so every season will come up with new scents so that's our product line great guys thank you all for joining us this evening we've really enjoyed it i mean it's been a while since we did a program together but i've enjoyed coming back she's enjoyed coming back and we hope to come and serve you another time thank you all definitely and also do follow us on our personal pages so eric on his art page myself on my page here maria Mwapabwedu. uh subscribe to our youtube channel and um follow us yeah. definitely thank you god bless, god bless you